Genesis chapter 1. First I'll read verse 11 and 12 and then I'll read verse 29. Genesis chapter 1 verse 11 and 12 and then I'll read verse 29. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit trees that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields seed according to its kind, and trees that yields fruit, whose seed is in it itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And come down to verse 29. And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed to you, it shall be food. And turn with me to Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night shall not cease. Well, we are talking about a financial and material prosperity, a very important aspect of the Christian life. And uh, you remember in the first part of the series, I showed you that it is God's will that you prosper. God's will that you prosper. It is God's plan, purpose, and it is his will that you prosper, especially financially and materially. And in the second part of this series, I'm showing you how God prospers you. Because as Christian people, you should never be ignorant of God's ways. You know, I often meet people who are, uh, live on assumptions. They just assume that this is how God will do things. They never go to the word and find out how God does things. He always does through the word. God always works through the word. He will never act independent of the word. So a lot of people live on the base of assumptions. They have their own ideas and own philosophy how God will do things for them. Uh, even the other day I was counseling two young people and they were in a problem. And they said, uh, they used the word somehow. They said, somehow God will do for me this, you know, thing. So I asked them, what do you mean somehow? <laughs> when I asked them, what do you mean somehow? Then they began to think. See, until then they never thought about that word somehow. And a lot of people, this is how they live. Even Christian people, when it comes to prosperity, when it comes to financial and material blessings, and you ask them, how do you think that God will prosper you financially and materially? Well, many of them use the same word. They say, somehow God will bless me. Somehow he will prosper me. He will do something and prosper me. So I ask them, what do you mean somehow? You mean to say God will go rob a bank and prosper you? Or he will drop suitcases of money from heaven to prosper you? What do you mean by that word somehow God will do something for you? Now, my friend, God will not somehow bless you and prosper you. That is why he has revealed through the word. That is why the Bible is so important. That is why the preaching and the teaching of God's word is the most important thing in the church. That Because God has revealed himself through the word. He has given us sufficient revelation concerning everything that we need to know here for life. So that is why as Christians, you should not live ignorantly. That is why it says there, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. Perish. The word perish is, you know, a very strong word. That means literally destroyed, come to nothing. Who? God's people. God's people come to nothing. They perish because of a lack of knowledge of God's word. Because God's word is the thing that reveals who God is. What is he like? What he has done? What he has accomplished for you? What he has promised you? And that is why the answer Jesus gave, he says, You shall know the truth and the truth will liberate you and set you free. See, when you lack knowledge in every area of your life, you lack knowledge. In all those areas, it's going to affect you. You are going to be hindered. You will not progress in your Christian life there. And that is why the truth is what liberates and sets people free. So that is why, as Christian people, you should not be ignorant of God's ways. You should not live your life based on assumptions, thinking somehow God will do things for you. Somehow God will do this and do that. No, my friend. That is why the Bible is so important. That is why Jesus said, Man shall live by bread alone, did he say? No, he shall not live by bread alone. By every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the living God. God's words are so important, it is very important. So as believers, we need to know the word. It is the word that liberates us and sets us free. God has revealed through the word how we will prosper you and me. How we will take a person who lives in lack and want. A person who has nothing and how God will bless him and how God will prosper him financially and materially. 
So I showed you there are several ways that the Bible teaches. And the first way is in Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22 where it says, The blessing of the Lord, it makes one rich. He adds no sorrow to it and neither does toiling increase it. I just quoted the Amplified Version. The blessing of the Lord, we dealt in great detail what that word blessing means. I told you that word blessing means it has different shades of meaning. Eh? Empowerment, supernatural empowerment, anointing. Eh? So every single child of God has a supernatural empowerment as an anointing upon his life that will cause him to prosper in life, that will propel him for success in life. So the blessing of the Lord, that is what makes a person rich. God's blessing, God's supernatural power within you, God's anointing within you, that will cause you to prosper even financially and materially. Then the second way I told you is God prospers you and me through the covenant. See, God made a covenant with man and we looked at the covenant of Abraham and I showed you how there are many blessings that are included in the covenant, many blessings. But one of the blessings is financial and material prosperity and that is why I told you the cross is very important. I showed you how Jesus died and shed his blood, not just to forgive your sins, not just so that you can have access to God and you become children of God. No, it's much more than that. He died on the cross and shed his blood even to meet your financial need. He meets every need, not just the spiritual needs. So he died on the cross there and shed his blood to meet our financial needs also. So that is the second way how God prospers you and me through the covenant that he established with man. Third way is through his laws. That is what we are looking at right now. See, I showed you from Genesis chapter 1 verse 11 and 12 and verse 29 and Genesis chapter 8 verse 29. Oh, sorry, 8 verse 22. All that I am going to say this morning is based upon these three verses here. So, I showed you how every law that has been ordered by God, whether it is natural laws or spiritual laws, every law has been ordered, instituted and established by God. Even the natural laws, God is the one who instituted the laws, not the scientist. <laughs> Some people think the scientists are the one who invented the laws. I tell you, my friend, they have never invented anything. They have only discovered something that already God put there in this universe. That is what a scientist does. He just discover. Sometimes they discover it by accident. <laughs> but the thing is this, every law, whether it is natural law or spiritual laws, it has been instituted by God. It has been established by God. And these laws have been instituted and established to teach us certain things. See, God will never do anything without a purpose. Anything that he does, anything that he creates, anything that he establishes is for a purpose. He will never do anything without a purpose. So whether it is a natural law or spiritual law, he establishes it for a purpose. And all laws, natural or spiritual, they teach us certain things. That is why I use the law of gravity. And I showed you what the law of gravity teaches. The law of gravity teaches you and me that whatever goes up has to come down. Now it will work for you, it will work for me, it will work for anyone, it will work everywhere. That's the law of gravity. That is what it teaches us. Then I showed you in Genesis chapter 2.15, there's another law that has been mentioned there, the law of work. I told you work is not a curse. It's a blessing. It has been ordained by God. It has been established by God. God is the one who has ordered man to work, has given a command to work. In Genesis 2.15, he created Adam and Eve, put them in the garden there. And even though there was abundance of everything there, fullness of everything there, even though they had everything, more than enough there, still God ordained man work. God gave man an assignment there. He wanted him to work. So it's not a curse, it's a blessing. Sweat is a result of sin and curse, not work. I told you many people hate the word work there. But God is the one who ordained work. Now why God instituted work? Especially in the beginning when he put Adam and Eve in the garden because they had everything in abundance. Then why they needed to work? Because I told you, work was never meant for a salary. God never told him, you work and I'll pay you a salary. Or oh, Adam never asked God, well I'll work and you pay me a salary. Work is not for a salary, my friend. Today, that is what we think. Eh? The first thing that we want to know is, what is my pay? How much you will pay me? Eh? But I showed you how God never intended you or never intended work for a salary. See, salary is only man's idea. Abundance is God's idea. Amen? God knows very well that no matter how much salary you get per month, it will not be sufficient for you. Even if you say, well, you know, sometimes we say, I told you, we say, well, if I only get one lakh, 
I'll be happy in life. There'll be no problems. Well, I'll guarantee you, you get one lakh every month. Sooner or later, you'll discover you need two lakhs to run the show. <laughs> That is why the Bible says you shall live by faith, not by your salary. Why? Because what you get this year will not be sufficient two years later for you. So God never intended work for a salary. God intended abundance. That is in God's mind. That, that is God's idea. This is how God thinks and does things there. So work is not for you to get a salary. Work is to bring out your potential, bring out your abilities. See, every single person that God creates in this planet, every person that is born on this planet is born in a unique way with unique gifts and potential and abilities. God never creates good for nothings and good for nothings. Every person is a unique person, uniquely gifted. He has unique abilities and capacities and gifts and talents. And that is why God assigned man work. Why? Because only when you work, only when you begin to do things, you begin to discover your potential within you. I can use an example of brother Isaac Thomas. He's a singer. If he doesn't sing, he will never know the potential that is in him. Only when he begins to do it, he'll discover the talent and the potential that God has put within him. See, this is why work. To bring out the potential within you. So in the same way, God has ordered this law called seed time and harvest time, sowing and reaping. What does this law teach you? This law teaches you how you can be the poorest of poor person and how you may be a person to say, well, I have only little and what I have is not enough. You know, it's not enough to pay my bills, not enough to pay this and pay that. Well, this is what this law teaches you, man. This is why God has ordained this law of seed time and harvest time, of sowing and reaping. Why? To teach you how you can take that little and how to cause that little to become abundance. Every law teaches something. And this is what the law of seed time and harvest time, the law of sowing and reaping teaches you and me. It teaches you how God takes the little that you have and how he prospers you and blesses you and causes you to have abundance from that little. See, this is how God works and does things, not somehow in any way. God doesn't work anyway and every way. No, he works in accordance with his principles. God works in line with his word. He will never do something apart from the word. So, from these verses, I made four statements. First thing I told you is that it is God who gives seed to the sower. That is what we read there in Genesis chapter 1, verse 11 and 12, and verse 29. God is the one who gives seed to the sower. The second thing is, I, show, I showed you from that verse, is that every seed has the ability to reproduce after its own kind. See, this is, the law of the seed. Apples, when you sow apple seeds, you will get apples only. Every seed has the ability and the power to produce after its own kind. You sow tomato seeds, you will get tomato. You sow orange seeds, you will get oranges. It has an inner life system within it. God has commanded an inner life system. And every seed is bound to produce after its own kind. Third statement I made is this. I showed you. Not only produce after its own kind, but every seed has the ability and the power to multiply and bring forth a harvest to you. Fourthly is, God has given us different seeds for different harvest. That's wonderful, isn't it? In other words, he's saying, whatever you want abundance of, whatever you want a harvest of, I give you the seed. All you have to do is take that seed, go and sow it, and you'll get a, a harvest of what you want. Different seeds... For different harvest. Whatever you want. You want plenty. Whatever you want more of is give you seeds. So you take it. You just obey his principle. Obey the law. You sow it and you get abundance of whatever you sow. That is what even Paul says. Whatever a man sows, he will reap. Now this is a general principle. It will work in anything. You sow love, you will reap love. You sow hatred, that is what you will reap. Whatever you sow, you will reap a harvest of it. So because we are talking about financial and material prosperity, we are using it in finances. And I showed you how in 2nd Corinthians chapter 8 and 9 Paul is actually talking about money there and he talks about when money becomes a seed. Because some people may ask well that is talking about seed but you are talking about money. When does money become seed? Well Paul says in 2nd Corinthians chapter 9 he says when money given for the gospel work when it is given for the kingdom of God it becomes seed. Isn't that amazing? Money when sown into the gospel work it is seed. When you give it for the purpose of God, it becomes a seed. And that is a time when it begins to multiply and comes back to you. 
So these are the four statements that we concluded from those few verses there. And we are looking at the first one. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 10. Second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 10. Now if you read from the King James Version, uh, this is how it goes. Now may he who supplies to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed that you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Now the King James Version uses the word may. And that word may is a very unfortunate translation. Translation, It's not a proper translation, not an equivalent translation. That is why, see today, there is no need for you to live in ignorance. Uh, you have many translations and every time they translate a Bible, an improvement is done. So if you go to some other version, you get out uh, the right one. And even the Amplified brings it out very good. It's not may. And now may he give you. That means it's talking about may God give you. He might give you or may not give you. It's indefinite there. But this is how it should be read. It says there, and God shall provide you or God shall supply. So that is the right translation, not me, God. Eh? It says, and God will supply or God will provide. Who? He will provide you seed to the sower and bread to the heater. Now we are going to look at this statement today. Eh? We are going to understand uh, what this means. I told you, when you read the Bible... It's better even if you read one verse in the Bible and you understand what you read than to read a whole chapter and not understand it. Eh? This is the problem sometimes with Christian people. They read you know, a whole chapter but they never understand what they're reading. And because you don't understand, you know, Bible does, does not, is not interesting to you. Eh? It, because you don't know what it's saying. You don't understand what it's saying. But once you begin to understand what the Bible is saying, that is the time when Bible study becomes very interesting and you'll really enjoy reading the Bible and spending time with God's word. So let us uh, look at this verse properly and let us you know, not take for granted that we know this verse there. And let us look at what Paul is trying to say here. It says there, and God who provides or supplies seed to the sower. Now here the apostle Paul, he has a wonderful revelation about God. And I think every Christian person, the first thing that he needs to do is... He needs to get a revelation about God. He needs to understand God through the scriptures. Not through experience or apart from scriptures. He needs to know God and understand God through the scriptures. And I think Paul is a wonderful person because he understands God. He gets to know God and he gets a revelation of God through the scriptures here. And that is why he makes a statement like this. You know what he says here? He says... And God who provides or supplies seed to the sower. Now when you read a verse like that, you may skip through it, you may run through it, and you may wonder what's so interesting in this verse. Well, I'll show you what's interesting in this verse. There. See, he says here, and God who supplies or provides. So the first thing that I understand from this verse is that Paul is saying here that God is not a withholder. He is not a person who takes away from you. That's how I understand it. Because he says God is a provider. God is a supplier. He says God provides, God supplies seed to the sower. So the first thing that comes to my mind that I understand is that God is not a withholder. You know, how many Christian people, sad to say, even preachers think that sometimes God withholds certain blessings. <laughs> how contrary to God's word that is. That is why I say, don't just live on assumptions. Don't just believe what people say. Even in the church here, I often tell you, I say, bring your Bible. And whenever I quote the verse, check what I'm saying is right or wrong. Don't take me for granted. So, that, that is exactly what this statement means. Paul, when he says God is a provider and God is the one who supplies seed to the sower... It tells me one thing. It tells me that God is not the person who withholds. See, a lot of people think that God is the one who withholds all the blessings. <laughs> Sad, isn't it? Now, I'm not talking about 
other people i'm talking about christian people in the church some people think god is the cause of all the problems and miseries in life god is the one who gives them troubles and trials and difficulties inflicts them with sickness and disease and sometimes i ask them why do you assume that god is the one who is the causing all the problems in life and putting all the trials in life and inflicting with sickness and disease they say then only you learn a lesson right he does all this thing to teach us a lesson we are so stubborn so god does all these things to teach us a lesson a basic revelation of god you need to have my friend through the scriptures you need to know and understand god what is he like who is he what type of person is he is he a good person bad person when i ask people sometimes you know people is god good or is he bad and sometimes i get both he say well pastor sometimes he is very 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 good to me but you know sometimes when he's in a bad mood he becomes very bad so they say sometimes he's good sometimes he's bad now where do you have that scripture in the bible my friend the bible says the lord is good his mercy is endures forever forever means it's forever only not sometimes good <laughs> some you you, you got to watch out what people preach sometimes what gets into you one time i heard a preacher from singapore coming and preaching not in my church i don't allow like that yet. in another place he says well when you pray sometimes god will say yes sometimes god will say no and sometimes god will say wait now it may sound very spiritual but the thing is i'm confused i don't know when he will say yes when he will say no when he will say wait <laughs> i'm i'm left in a state of confusion <laughs> what the bible says whatever you ask the father in the name of jesus does it say sometimes yes sometimes no or sometimes wait no my friend he will give it to you isn't it get acquainted with the bible when you get acquainted with the bible you get acquainted with god you begin to understand the type of god that you serve and worship you begin to know him intimately you begin to understand his ways you begin to know his heart his mind his plan his purposes whether he is good or bad and this is one of the things we understand from this statement here that god is a provider god is a person who supplies he is not a person who withholds anything from your life i show you from the scriptures my friend if something is good for you if something will make you happy if something is going to make your life better and i say to you based upon the authority of god's word that god will see to it that you have it amen god will see to it that you have it my friend god never withholds anything good from your life god is not even a taker from you <laughs> we have a lot of christian jobs today in the church they say well the lord gave and the lord took brother <laughs> well the lord gives my friend he doesn't take he is a giver everybody say he is a giver well you all are at breakfast i think can you say it better he is a giver <laughs> yeah he is a giver he is not a taker don't get afraid of god <laughs> a lot of people are afraid to come to church thinking god will take away whatever they have no my friend god is not a taker he is not a withholder he is a giver and i tell you nobody can outgive god no man no one can outgive god he is the best giver and when he gives he sees to it that he always gives the best that's the type of god that we worship and we preach here amen he always gives the best my friend so when you read a statement like that that is what comes to my mind and that is what see paul understand all these things that is why he makes statements like this in another place he says in, in the book of philippians he says my god shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory that is in christ jesus he doesn't say my god takes away whatever i have <laughs> sometimes he is good sometimes he is bad sometimes he gives sometimes he takes no my friend here is a person who has a revelation of god who understands god through the scriptures and he knows god He knows that God is a giver that God is a supplier he is a giver of every good thing so God does not withhold anything from your life if something is good for you he will give it to you he is not a taker he doesn't take away things from you no he gives John 3:16 what does it say there a very famous scripture everyone should know by heart for God so loved the world that what did he do he gave his one and only begotten son the best gift 
he gave his own son to die for sinners who are not worthy <laughs> he gave the best gift my friend he knew if he gave jesus to die then mankind will be saved see he will never withhold anything that is good from you and me he never withheld jesus because he knew if he would just allow jesus to die there on the cross and shed his blood then the entire humanity have an opportunity to be saved every single person can be saved because of jesus and what he has done on the cross there one timothy chapter 6 verse 17 towards the end it says there it is god you know paul timothy gives teaching to the rich there actually paul instructs in timothy to give teaching to those who are rich and eh? how to conduct themselves and all those things and then he says it is god who gives us richly all things to enjoy life i like that verse god gives us richly all things why so that you may enjoy life god is not a withholder my friend and he is not a taker he is a liberal giver i'll show you from the scriptures when he gives he always gives in abundance you know why because that is his nature you need to understand the very nature of god that is what is lacking today in the churches that is what is lacking among christian people they don't know the very nature of god that he is a good god that he is a god who gives liberally and because he is a liberal god when he gives it is always abundance it is always much more than what you think or what you ask or what you can even imagine of because that's his nature that is how he does things so 1 timothy 6:17 says he gives us richly all things to enjoy life he doesn't take he doesn't withhold he gives if something is going to make your life better if it's going to make you happier i tell you then god will see to it that you have it i always use the illust- illustration if you are a parent if you are a father and mother and you if you have a child and if you know something is good for your child i tell you you will go to any limit to do it for your child because every parent wants to give that child the best i told you i know parents who want the children to have the best education they want the children to be put in the best school there they want to give their children the best in life isn't it now if you and me earthly parents can think like that then how much more our heavenly father how come you think he's a taker and he's a withholder no my friend if something is good for you if something is going to make make life better for you and if you're going it's going to bring joy to you then god will see to it that you have it because when you are happy he's happy eh? when you see your child happy in life i tell you the child is happy because you have given the child a wonderful thing but the parent the father and the mother is much more happier because the joy of that child is the ultimate for them Psalm 84 verse 11 says that he will not withhold anything good from them that walk it uprightly are you walking in god's ways are you walking in his paths i tell you this is what the psalmist is saying he will never withhold anything good from your life okay? so god is not a withholder he is not a person who takes away the little that you have no He is a person who will never withhold anything good from your life. If something is good for you, he will see that you have it. Again in Psalm 68 verse 19, it says that, Who, uh, who daily loaded us, loads us with benefit. <laughs> I like that. Every day he loads me with benefits. <laughs> so all these scriptures, not only here, all these scriptures tell us one thing very clearly. That God never withholds anything good from our lives. If something is good, then he'll see to it that we have it he's not even a taker he doesn't take anything from us he's a giver so that is what it means there when it says there paul is talking about that and he says there and god provides or supplies seed to the sower now the thing is when you read the statement i want you to understand who god provides here because it's very accurate here paul says god provides or god supplies seed to the sower So you got to get a clear understanding about 
who god supplies now i told you he is not talking about seed here he is not talking about how god will give you a seed so that you can go you know and sow it and get tomatoes or got apples or got mangoes no he is talking about money here second okay. corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9 he is talking about money here money giving given for the gospel work money given for the kingdom of god it becomes seed so he is talking about how money becomes seed and how money is seed and he is talking about how god gives seed to the sower in other words i would say god gives money to who to the sower <laughs> so who god gives money not to everybody and everybody he says yeah god gives money to the sower <laughs> every one of you have money don't worry i told you this is a church <laughs> where you don't have to hide anything <laughs> some churches you may have to hide your things <laughs> i know some some you know some places where you go if you buy you have, if you have a luxury car you cannot take it to the church because if you drive that luxury car to the church the next day the pastor is at your home <laughs> some places you know you can't wear certain things and go <laughs> because you know if you put on all those chains and those bangles and you know and you go to the church next day he is at your home there <laughs> One time I was shocked when I seen a young you know group of young people they were about to enter into a church and before they could enter into the church they just stopped outside there they removed all the chains all the bangles all the earrings everything put it in that little purse that they had and then went to the church and when they came out again they put it on and went back home <laughs> So here you don't have to hide anything you don't have to get afraid about anything amen I always tell people you can't hide the money <laughs> when god begins to bless you you cannot hide it my friend no matter what you try you cannot hide it it will show up in the way you look it will show up in the way you dress it will show up in the things that you wear it will show up in the you no know, car that you'll drive it will show up in the house that you it will show out you cannot hide money and keep it it will show so don't worry about it show it out <laughs> amen you don't have to hide it <laughs> don't get afraid about it i'll not come to your home next day So everybody has money now say it boldly. Yes? Yeah. <laughs> I told you the only difference is some people have more of it some people have less of it. So don't worry if you have less. That is why God's word is here and that is why I'm here to teach you and to show you the principles of God. God is such a wonderful God he has ordained things to be so easy he made things so simple that anyone the most educated uneducated the most illiterate person and the most poorest of poor person even he can prosper if he just obeys the principles and the laws of God if he simply obeys God's principles and laws then i tell you he can prosper he can change is way of living he can break free from financial debt and bondage and from poverty and he can begin to live in god's abundance and fullness that is how god has ordained things he has made things very easy very simple so that anyone can simply obey the principles look at the principles understand it obey it and live in the fullness of god's blessings that is how things are being made here so according to this verse God provides a God supplies seed to the sower and if you take that word seed and put the word money it says there so God provides money or God supplies money to the sower so God supplies every one year every one of you have money isn't it yes if you say well i don't have money then let me say three things about that you either fit in one of these categories <laughs> if you say well i don't have money i don't have seed Number 1 is you must be a liar. <laughs> I choose to believe God's word. <laughs> God's word is always true. The Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. Eh? Man will lie but God cannot lie. Eh? And God is the one who created man. So I choose to put my trust and faith in God's word. Eh? So God says that he's the one who provides. He's the one who supplies everyone with money. I want to show you something here. he supplies everyone with money he provides everyone with money so everyone has it some may have more some may have little that doesn't matter but everybody has money so you can't say i don't have if you say that number one you are a liar second thing if you say well i don't have money then the second problem is probably you are eating all the money <laughs> 
See, that is why that statement is very important. See how important it is when you read your Bible. You should never read your Bible in a hurried manner. You should never take the Bible for granted. Every single verse is so important. Every single word is so important. That is why Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the living God. Every word that is written here is good for our living. It is important for our living. And especially living successfully, living victoriously in this life. Every word is important, my friend. Not one word here is unimportant. Every word is important. So if you say you don't have money, then probably you are eating all the seed. Now Paul says here, it is God who gives seed to the sower and he doesn't stop there and bread to the eater. So God, he gives you seed and he gives you bread. He gives you both. He, he knows that you need both. You need bread to eat, you need seed to sow. That is why he gives you seed to sow and bread to eat. But what you do or what many people do, they eat the bread and they eat away the seed also. I showed you how a lot of Christian people are living on the seed instead of living on the harvest. God never intended you to live on the seed, my friend. Seed is not for eating. <laughs> Some people, it's like that. That's why no matter how much they have, it's never sufficient. You know why? Because the more they get, the more they begin to eat. <laughs> they just eat away everything. <laughs> Now, when you eat everything and you don't have seed to, the, to sow, then how can you expect a harvest? How can you hope for an harvest? How can you look forward to an harvest if you don't sow? Because this is God's law. This is God's principle. God said from the very beginning, as long as earth remains, seed time and harvest time, sowing and reaping will remain. As long as earth remains, this law will work. This is how I've ordained it to be. Whatever you want, you have to sow. If you want tomatoes, you take tomato seed and you sow it. If you want apples, you take apple seed and sow it. If you want mangoes, you take mango seed and you sow it. Whatever you want more of, the seed is there. Just take it and sow it and you'll get an abundance and a harvest of whatever you want. This is God's principle, my friend. It'll never fail. Last time I showed you how... God has ordained a life system in every seed. That means every seed is bound to fulfill that life system. Every seed has life in it. And every seed has a life system. And I told you, when the, when the seed is given an opportunity, then it will fulfill to perfection that life system. <laughs> to perfection it will be fulfilled. Why? Because God has ordained it like that. Can you imagine a seed... When sown, when given an opportunity, when it is sown, it will fulfill its potential to perfection. Because God has ordained it like that. So God's laws, God's principles will never fail. So God says there in 2 Corinthians 9, 10, you know, Paul says there, God is the one who provides or supplies seed to the sower. That means he gives you seed for sowing and then he also gives you bread to eat. So if you say that you don't have seed, that means... You're probably eating the seed also. A lot of Christian people are deceived by just living on the seed when God wants you to live on the harvest. <laughs> well, the seed is for sowing. And why you sow? To get a harvest of whatever you want. To get an abundance of what you want. Live on the harvest, my friend. Don't just be satisfied with the seed and living on the seed. So if you say you don't have seed, then you're eating all the seed. When you eat all the seed, you have nothing to sow. When you don't sow... You don't have an harvest. Nothing coming forth. Third thing is, if you say that you don't have seed, then probably you are not a sower. <laughs> because Paul makes it very clear here. God supplies or provides seed to who? To the sower. He doesn't say God supplies or provides seed to the one who eats away the seed. <laughs> no, my friend. He supplied seed to who? To the sower. See, that is why you need to understand that statement very much because, you know, sometimes people may wonder, you know, why I'm not prospering? When God wants me to prosper, why am I not prospering? Why am I not experiencing the abundance? 
that I'm supposed to enjoy in life. So he gives seed to the sower. Now the question is why God gives seed to the sower? Why he doesn't give it to anybody and everybody? Well, I'll tell you. God gives seed to the sower because when the person takes that seed and he sows it, not only is he blessed by that, he's blessed. It satisfies, you know, it meets all his needs. So not only that seed blesses him, but also it blesses the kingdom of God. That is why Paul says, God gives seed to the sower. He gives to who? He gives the person who sows. Why? Because the person who sows, he reaps a harvest. So when he reaps a harvest, he is blessed. And not only he is blessed, he also blesses the kingdom of God. That means the whole purpose of the seed that is given into hand, in his hand reaches its full perfection. That is why seed, why God gives you seed? So that it will bless you and it will bless the kingdom of God. It will bless the work of God. So that is why Paul says, God gives seed to the sower, not just to anybody and everybody. <laughs> because I told you, God had put the principle of life in the seed and every seed has a life system within it. But the thing is, if you take that seed and keep it in your hand, and you can polish it, and you can shine it, and you can hold it, and you can look at it, and you can admire it, but nothing will happen in, to that seed. It will still remain a single seed only. It may look beautiful, you can admire it and all those things, but it will still remain a seed only. The seed has to be sown. Only when it is sown, it will reach its full potential. Only then it will produce a harvest, uh, uh, you know, whatever you sow. It reproduces, it multiplies and comes back to you as an harvest there. As long as it is in your hand, it will remain a single seed only. But when it is sown, it comes back as an harvest. So that is why Paul says, God provides or supplies seed to the sower. That is why. Why? Because when he gets it, he sows it. And when he sows it, he gets a harvest. The harvest blesses him. And it also blesses the kingdom of God and blesses the work of God. So the seed reaches its full potential. That is the whole purpose why God gives seed. Not to eat everything. So if you are a person who is saying you don't have seed, then you must fit in one of these categories. Now, just imagine if you were God and sitting down there in heaven and you have a bag of seed with you and you want to give the seed to somebody... So who will you give it to? Will you give it to the person who is just holding everything and keeping it there, burying it in his bathroom, in the bed and everywhere? Will, give it, will you give it to such a person? Or will you give it to the person who is eating away everything? No matter how much you give me, he is just eating it. Or will you give it to the person who sows it and get a harvest of that? Who will you give it to? Yeah, you will give to the one who sows it, isn't it? Not to the one who holds it and never to the one who eats everything. You will give it to the sower. That is why Paul says, and God gives seed to the sower. Now the question arises. See, because you must know, you must get a revelation of who God gives money to. The person whom God trusts with finances and gives abundance of finances. What type of person is he? Well, it says there, and God supplies or provides seed to the sower. So who is a sower? I'll tell you. A sower is a person who has, oh, I, I would put it more accurately in this way, whose profession is sowing. I'll put it like that. I'll come back to you later. That means he's a person who continuously keeps giving. A lifestyle of giving. He lives in that manner. Giving is part of his lifestyle. That is how he lives. He's not a person who gives once in a blue moon. <laughs> you know, I'm a pastor. I know that very well. Not all people are. There are some people. You know, sometimes, especially during Christmas and New Year, Eh? Many people come and give some faces I have not seen. I don't know the person also. And they have not even been in the church. But 
Christmas and New Year time, they just bring a cover to me and they come and give it. Oh, Pastor, it's Christmas. You know, it's God, love. And we need to share God's love and this and that. And they'll give an offering and, you know, they'll say it is for, God, it is for God's work. You just use it. Now, there are people, you know, once in a way, once in a blue moon, who will give money, contribute money to the work of God and to the church. But he's not a sower. A sower is a person who has a lifestyle of sowing. I would say that's his profession or that is his top priority. He is a sower. You've got to know for sure who is a sower. A sower is a person who gives continuously. The Bible talks about giving. We'll talk about it later. Eh? How the Bible talks about how you need to give regularly. You need to plan what you give. How you need to give cheerfully. All those things that it gives guidelines for giving. Not just simply giving. The Bible gives some guidelines to giving. And how you can be blessed by giving. So, a sower is a person who has a lifestyle of sowing. That means he sows in a very systematic way. He sows regularly. He is a person who is constantly looking for ways to sow. He is a sower. Now, we call people. We look at people and we say, well, he is an electrician or he is a plumber. We say that, isn't it? Now, what do you mean when you say that he is an electrician or he is a plumber? Do you call him an electrician or a plumber just because once in a year he takes the tester and he mingles with electricity? Sometimes in Bangalore it's like that. <laughs> you call him an electrician, you say he's a plumber. What do you mean by that? Is it once in a way because he takes the tester or he takes the spanner and go meddles with something that you call him that? No, my friend, that is his profession. He lives by that. All his life, that is what he's doing. That is his work. That is part of his life. So that is why we call him an electrician. That is why we call him a plumber. Because that is part of his life. And I tell you, it is the same even of a sower. Just because a person once in a way sows, or once in a blue moon sows, or just sows on occasions there, he's not a sower. A sower is a person who has a lifestyle of sowing, Sowing is part of his lifestyle. It is part of his life. It is part of the way that he lives. So that is what Paul is talking about. He's talking about how God gives or provides or supplies seed to the sower, to the person who has a lifestyle of giving. Now you understand why people who give much have much. <laughs> you know, today you look at AFT Chennai. People look at the church today. They look at the people there. You know what they say? Well, that is, you know, a rich church, brother. That is, you know, a church only for all the rich people because it's full of AC. All the people are so rich. They have cars and they have this and that. That's all they know about it. But they didn't know how he started. <laughs> he started in a cemetery, in a hut. I had the great privilege of working there. And I see now everything went on. These are God's principles, principles, my friend. It will never fail. As long as earth remains, seed time and harvest time remains. Today when they look at it, they say, well, it's a rich church. You know, it's a church of a year, so much money and all that. But nobody knows his heart. <laughs> nobody knows how much he gives. <laughs> I know. Because I worked under him. I know every day how much it costs to run a ministry like that. <laughs> So, when you see people with abundance, when you see people who have a lot, our mind tells us different. Well, you know, he must have done something. That's why he has so much. No, my friend. He's a person who has been sowing. <laughs> that is why he has so much. So, a sower is a person who has a lifestyle of sowing. Sowing is his top priority. It's part of his life. That is how he lives there. It's not just once in a way where he, you know, gives <laughs> see simply giving your money also is not important how you give also is important I know a lot of people who give just because they feel sympathy or feel sorry sometimes for the pastor <laughs> well if you give like that you will not be blessed your giving will not be blessed even the person who receives that also will not be blessed <laughs> one time I asked a person who was giving money to another person I asked him why are you giving that person money like, oh to do pastor he's a poor person just feel sorry for him and giving. 
So giving alone is not sufficient. How you give is more important. Are you giving according to God's principles? God's way? God's guidelines? So this is what it's saying there. He supplies or provides seed to the soul. That means the one who sows, the one who has the heart of a sower, that person God supplies and provides seed. Why? Because God knows he can trust him with the seed because when he gives him the seed, the seed will reach its full potential. If it is given to anybody else, it will never reach its full potential. It will just go to waste. <laughs> You know, for more than, uh, I think, 12 or 15 years, I've served and worked as an associate pastor in AFT Chennai there. And I've counseled a lot of people. I meet a lot of people. And all kinds of people I meet. And one of the people, you know, I meet is, they say like this. Even after coming to Bangalore, many people have come to me personally. And this is what they've told me. You know what they've told me? They told me, well, pastor, I'm just waiting for that big deal. I'm just waiting for that big contract. And that moment that big deal and that big contract is over, you know, I'm going to get a big sum of money. When I get that big sum of money, surely 25% I'll give for the church. They think next day I'll come to the home. <laughs> well, my experience tell me, tells me and God's word tells me that givers are not talkers and talkers are not givers. <laughs> I learned that. <laughs> People who talk don't give. People who give don't talk. <laughs> Sometimes preachers don't know these things. <laughs> but this is what people tell me. And they tell me these things thinking that I'll be impressed by them. Yeah. That I'll begin to give them importance. You know, and oh, let's keep in good terms with him. Because, you know, one day he's going to finish this big deal. He's going to finish this big contract. He's going to get a lump sum. And when he gets a lump sum, he promised me 25% and he will give me. So let's keep in good books with him. <laughs> well, I tell you, my friend, you know what the word says? It says totally differently. Now, when a person tells me like this, when that big deal... Eh? Or when that big contract, or when that thing is over, I'll give you so much, I'll give you 25%. It is like this, it is like the farmer telling, when the harvest comes, I will sow seeds. <laughs> it's just like that, similar to that. When the harvest comes, I will sow seeds. Now... How did God ordain things? See, when God ordained the increase, when God thought about increase, when God thought about abundance, he didn't ordain harvest first. God didn't say, well, I'll give you a harvest first and then you sow seeds. No, he says, I'll give you seed first. That is why I told you, you need to know how God works. God doesn't bless you with a harvest first, my friend. A lot of Christian people are praying for a harvest of financial miracles to take place. For a harvest to, you know, break through <laughs> in finances. And they think God will give them a harvest of financial breakthrough. I'll tell you, my friend, even if God gives you a bumper crop, <laughs> you know what's a bumper crop? More than what you can expect. Even if God gives you a bumper crop, you know what will happen? You will eat everything. <laughs> and you will still be without anything. So God doesn't work like that. He doesn't bless a person with a harvest or whatever you want. I'll tell you how he does things. God gives you seed to the sower because he has ordained seed time and harvest time. Sowing and reaping. You got to sow in order to reap, my friend. You can't say, well, when I reap, then I will sow. No. Whatever you want to reap, you have to sow first. You'll never see any farmer going to the field there and expecting a harvest when he has never sowed anything. I told you, you'll never see one person like that. If he has not sown, he will never expect a harvest. He will never even hope for a harvest. He will never even dream of a harvest. He will never go there and pray, Oh God, I have not sowed. Please somehow do a miracle and cause a harvest to come. Have you seen a farmer like that? No, my friend. He knows very well that unless he sows, he's got to work on that field. He's got to take seed. He's got to sow it there. And only then he can expect, he can hope, and he can look forward for a harvest and believe God for a harvest. 
So if you say, when that big deal, when that big contract comes, then I'll give you a big sum. It's like that. It's you are telling, well, when the harvest comes, then I will sow. No, my friend. That is why the Bible says, when you're faithful in little, you'll be faithful in much. <laughs> so don't wait for that big deal. Don't wait for that, you know, big contract. No. Start with the little that you have. See, you can fool anybody else, but you can't fool God. <laughs> that is what Paul talks about. Paul talks about it. He says you can't make mock God. You cannot fool God. God is the one who created you and me. He knows us in and out. We cannot hide anything from God. Nothing can be hidden from God. So this is God's principle. I choose to put my faith and trust in God's word. And God's word says when you are faithful in little, that is when you will be faithful in plenty. I'll tell you, when you get little and when you think that little is not enough, Believe God's laws, believe God's principles and take that little and sow it and don't eat everything. Because when you sow it, this is how God blesses what you sow and causes what you sow to come back to you in abundance. That is why sowing and reaping, seed time and harvest time. See, when you sow, then you will reap. What you will reap? You will reap whatever you sowed and you will reap a harvest. What is a harvest? Harvest is abundance. Amen? Harvest is abundance. See, when you reap the harvest, you have enough to eat, you have enough to put by, plus you have enough to sow also. That is what a harvest means. Abundance, more than enough. So when you are faithful and little, then God blesses you with a plenty. So that when you get plenty, you will be faithful in that. One. But if you say no, well, when that big contract, when that big deal comes, then I will sow a big amount. You know what will happen? The contract will come, the money will come in your hand, and you'll look at the money, oh, this is a big sum. And then you will say, well, God, this time I made a mistake, so I'll take back my word. Next contract when I get, then I'll give to the church. <laughs> you will eat everything. So don't wait. For the big amount, my friend. That is why I tell people, it doesn't matter how poor you are. See, you need to understand God. Eh? I'm also, I'm not a bad person. I'm not a mean person. <laughs> I understand that sometimes you have little. I know that the little that you have is not even enough to meet your bills. I know that. The amount that you get sometimes. Some people work 31 days. They work so hard and they are paid there. And whatever you know, they get is not sufficient to meet their bills. I know it. I understand it. I am living here in planet earth. <laughs> I am not living in heaven, my friend. <laughs> I am living in planet earth. I know what people go through in life. I know how every day it's a great struggle, especially financially. Financial trouble is the biggest trouble. They say it's 90% of all the other problems. <laughs> Root cause of all other problems is financial problem. So I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. I know it's not easy. I'll show it to you in the next week. But the thing is this. I'm trying to show you how to break free from poverty. Break free from lack. Break free from want. Believe in God. Believe in his principles. Believe in God's laws. You know, it will never fail. God's laws will never fail you. God's principles will never fail you. So believe in that and change your situation. Take that little that you have. Believe God. Trust God and sow it. And believe him for a harvest. And I tell you, whatever you sow will come back to you as a harvest. Because God's blessing will be there. It will multiply and come back to you. That is why God ordained this law. Seed time and harvest time. Sowing and reaping. Don't tell me God is a mean God. That he takes away the little that you have. No my friend. You cannot show me one incident in the Bible that anyone has given to God and went bankrupt. No. Anyone that has given to God was always blessed with abundance. <laughs> you take the five loaves and two fishes. You take the you know, person who had just the last meal. A little flour and a little oil. They just wanted to eat it. She and her son wanted to eat. That was the last meal. They wanted to die. About to die. But then the prophet said, well, don't eat it. First make for me. Then what happened? Did they run short? No. Till the next harvest came, they had abundance in their home. Never ran short of that. You'll never show one place in the Bible where anybody that has given to God has gone bankrupt. That's a lie of the devil, my friend. God wants you to live in abundance. 
that is why god has ordained these laws laws of seed time and harvest time what do you think god is teaching us god is giving a great lecture on farming is he telling you how to get more potatoes and uh, onions and tomatoes and apples now my friend the bible is a book of life it teaches us the principles of life all these laws teach us how to prosper law of seed time and harvest time sowing and reaping teaches you and me how to prosper in life even if you are poor how you can become rich by trusting and believing in the principles and laws of god well i'll just stay with this next week we'll continue